Yes or no, go. No. No. I don't think they can. I don't know. That was a rocky <laughs> series. This is a weird matchup because Alliance has been really hit or miss. Some days yeah. they've looked really good. Other days they haven't looked so great. I feel like Monkey Business has been similar. They've consistently looked a little bit better, but that last series I felt was fairly convincing. So I'm going with Alliance. My predictions have been all over the place tonight. So this one, I'm sticking with my guns. 2 hour Alliance. Let's wow. see it. Okay. Wow. S4 Bat Rider. I will hear. Okay. If, if they don't get Bat Rider for S4, will you still stick with that? Sure, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> committed to that. Very I'm committed. I know. I, I can't go back. There is no enthusiasm that way. Don't yeah. worry, you two can decide once the draft yeah, is actually done. The because one. the draft has actually started. And we can Darn. take a look at what the teams have in store for each other. As we already have the IO ban as well as Alina for the side of Monkey Business. No Nature's Profit ban as we saw yesterday. Oh. And no Bad Rider <laughs> ban. Does, and then for Lions, they've been a dark seer and anti mage. Does S4 ever play Magnus these days? Because I, I miss a good old fashioned S4 while. Magnus. Could this be the day, Lumi? This can be the day. Will this be the day? I mean, that's the question. They have heroes like PA, Life Stealer, <laughs> definitely could benefit from Empower, who mm -hmm. they get buff. Spectre okay. as well. First I think Spectre toss. is not. We haven't really seen it that much. Or... Straight up first pick Ember, Ember Spirit. Okay. Bold. I mean, they did see Era, you know, decimate Alliance. They with also Ember Spirit. lost with it as well. Yeah, that's also the case. <laughs> Maybe you like the hero. No, is I, it I, not slightly? I, I know no tail plays this hero really well. Yeah, Chinese but would you not? You would pick it in the second phase, really, mm. because now everybody knows what you're gonna play and they can counter it very easily. Maybe that's the plan. I mean, pick a doom, you're done. Doom is available. Doom is available. Pick a doom and you're done. Yeah, it's pretty accurate. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. Hmm. They still have a. Okay, so they picked Tusk, so they want the... Ten like, Tusk is such a good first pick, it's actually ridiculous. You have Snowball to counter any any sort of, like, single target initiation. And the Bat Rider, so... Oh, I like that. Not that it was hard to call, but so far, so good, boys. Might Do, not be a Doom, but, you know... Did oh, they wow. second phase ban the Nature's Prophet on Monkey Business? I think Would you really expect to see it come out if it's not banned, though? I mean, yes, it's it's, it's nice with the new eggs upgrade, but... Well, it's, it's, nice, it's nice with uh, Bat Rider. It's really nice with Bat Rider. Yeah, we saw yesterday how much they rely on the global yeah. backup with the Bat. Exactly. I think if it doesn't get banned, it's it's likely Bulldog will play it. Yeah, so also learning from the, I guess, mistakes of yesterday, Alliance needs to pick up more single target support. They had Tusk and Lina mm -hmm. as their dual disable alongside with Bat Rider. Um, but I think um, Hanskin had a great static storm. Yeah. And that broke things up, so... Hopefully they get to draft a little oh, bit more reliable stun against the Simper Spirit. Especially now you're also dealing with the Dazzle Grave. So you probably have to stun through and kill through the uh, Dazzle Grave. Okay, well there's the Doom Band. Makes a lot of sense for monkey business. Clockwork as well. One yeah. of the, in the second game against Alliance yesterday, remaining. Clockwork had a huge part to play in mm -hmm. disrupting That's true. Rider. That's true. Absolutely. Five seconds remaining. Does, has Loda ever played uh, Safe Lane Axe for Alliance? I don't think so. Centaur is the one they usually go That's to for true. the yeah. similar hero. I was thinking since there's a Dazzle, you could chop through Dying that grave. I think Cent Safe Lane and Centaur is actually very, very good. But usually if they do that, um, their mid player, which was Pika, usually played like a Shadow Fiend or something. Some sort kind of, of carry to make up for the exactly. lack and of safe Exactly. is not really the kind of mid you want for that kind of lineup. Yeah. I like the Earthshaker ban here as well. He had driving role in that last series, first picked by Empire, and also amazing against the Bat Rider as we've seen. Do we want to see a disruptor this game from either side? Actually, it could work. It could be good for both teams, actually. Yeah. I think Rubik is a very good pick for Monkey Business. I know Crit plays it very, very well. Still, you're lacking damage in your supports if you pick that. But Ember Spirit's kind of one of them cores that does a lot of early game damage, so it kind of makes up for it. Similar to like a Gyrocopter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good against Bat Rider. You have the instant stun to stop the last two. Yeah, I like disruptor uh, as well. Mm -hmm. To answer Shiva's question on both teams. Monkey oh. Business have uh, also played Legion Commander in the offlane against the Bat Rider. That could work. Yeah, to dispel the ultimate. Yeah. yeah. Now we keep saying that, that we actually never see that no, we don't. happening. No. It's hard to do. I mean, a good Bat Rider player can kind of play around it. And, and S4 is a good Bat Rider S4 player. S4 fits so. the bill there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You, you could say he's the only Bat Rider player now, because yeah. nobody has really given that hero a try. Any credit. It's true. Who knows? Maybe this time it's going to be Bulldog. Maybe they're going to throw a curveball. They still have the potential, yeah. And they still have the Prophet, which I'm curious about. Prophet's... Night Stalker. Ooh, okay. okay, so we saw Night Stalker banned in the first phase, I think, 
in both games last like, series? Last series? No. At least in the second game. I forget about the first one. La last series was a uh, second phase ban, and first series was indeed first phase ban. Okay, so I had it backwards, but... First by Empire banned, and afterwards was actually banned by Monkey themselves. Okay. It's really good with Dazzle, you know, you just get in their face, you have the Dazzle to kind of get you back out with the high movement speed, like even a Grave is enough to just get you. Yeah. Ooh. This uh, is a very important take for the for anti-Bat Rider in the sense that during nighttime, Bat just can't gank. Because mm -hmm. a big part of Bat Rider is having some sort of war vision or you firefly over trees and you get vision of hero and then you blink in with night uh what's it called darkness darkness yeah, yeah. you just don't see anything like yeah. you put a board down and see it's like what 600 vision it's so around small, it yeah. so it's gonna be very tough for bat rider if he doesn't pick any other vision Slark. granting hero oh my god slack nice a little bit of combo here slark has a yeah, the nighttime vision has better nighttime vision so yeah so it's actually a, Alliance is blind. What about a hero like Zeus or some sort of... Yeah, so they need noob damage, first of all. They also need vision. What about a Kodal? Has can both as well. It turn a daytime, just fight. I mm, know oh, you can't, can't turn a daytime. Just, uh, <laughs> get, get Ags and, uh, you know, just easy from that Ags and get the vision constantly, okay. constantly as well. Well, it's a heavy melee core here for Monkey Business. Mm. So Chain Frost has some potential to do some serious work in these team fights. I mean, they also pick. They also realize how effective Lich was in terms of yep. limiting the farm. I remember yesterday. But mm -hmm. again, the question is, how do you stun these people? Nice Soccer moves fast. Slark is hard to control. Ember is hard to control. And there's Grave on everybody, Five or whoever you focus. Uh, the Lich, though, in itself, Alliances it opens up the lanes so so much. You know, you can do Bristleback Lich. It's really powerful. Yeah, I was just but, thinking that you give him the armor, and then if you hit him, you get the additional slow on top of the sticky goo. That's exactly. a scary combo. But how do you stun people? Well, not with the Slardar, because that hero it's just got banned out. Yeah. Which okay. other core <laughs> could you still go <laughs> for? Because they're going to have the Tusk as a support, as they did yesterday. Probably, then you can still go for a Wraith King. And Sven. Sven, as we keep pointing out. Yesterday, they went for a Wraith King over Sven, I believe. Yeah, the Wraith King could be quite nice here, actually. Mm. Still a tricky one. Could yeah. be a core Tusk. Who knows? They would be really light on carry power, though. And they don't really have much sieging power, so they can't, wouldn't want to go late game against an Ember Slark, and you don't really have any way to break the base. Mm -hmm. I think they need a ranged uh, core. Gyrocopter. Yeah. <laughs> I, I keep mentioning him as well, yeah. No, but the, again, with that heavy melee core, hit a, they can get a lot of uh, damage with the call downs, the flat cannon. Hard to spread out. The downside is no. Night Stalker is going to be building a BKB. Is, it's build going to be so hard to kill Slark. It's like going to be nearly impossible. You need, I, need some sort of instant stun. I actually think you go Prophet here and you build... Orchid. Orchid, yeah. That's that's their disable. And go load up, load up load Bristle. Bristle. Yeah. Load a Bristle. You could run it even offensive. Offensive trialing. Yeah, I think that's a good show, actually. That would, that's really that creative. Really I like that. Okay. And the Orchid also gives you some versatility to pick on the Dazzle if you catch him out of position. Same with the Ember. Yeah. The problem is though, if it, you like you TP in as uh, Nature's Prophet, you're getting hit with Slark, Night Stalker, and Is that a Nice Stalker? TP into the trees, man, and mm -hmm. they blink out with Orchid. So the one issue with I have this monkey business draft is they do not have much in the way of stuns. But where they don't have stuns, they make up for it in slows. That is true. You yeah. have it's going to be hard to get away from this group. You've got Pounce, you've got the Searing Chains, and then all the slows from Veno as well as Night Stalker, even the Poison Touch for that matter. So. They're not totally lacking on control, but it's very one-dimensional control. Mm, I think one of the best things uh, about uh, Slark as well, if you can keep up the vision with Night Stalker, um, you can always dark pack that bot right away. He's never getting it on you. Yeah. So you talked about the vision. Veno Menser adds to that. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be hard for Bat Rider to find ganks. Not only that, if Alliance have wards in the enemy jungle, Slark could find it and de-ward it. Yep. So I feel like Alliance essentially is playing again with a blind map. Here it is. And they're, okay. There he is again. 100% monkey business is going to win this game. I was already not sold on Alliance's draft, but I'm adding the Necrofoils on top. Can I jump can, ship? I, I, will, I will allow you to jump ship. Everybody else can, can choose after the draft, so go ahead. I mean, I like I said before, I'm, I'm just not sold on the Necrofoils. We've seen it with really pretty poor results, I think this is a tough draft for Especially a life. Especially against a Dazzle, one of the best counters to Necrofoss in the game. Yeah. You know, you shallow grave the ulti and it's just it's tough. Yeah, yeah, one second to do it. Yeah. So, you're saying uh, Monkey? I think Monkey Business have just monkey? a superior draft. Monkey. Monkey? What, what are you going to go with, Shiva? I will go for last. That's, you, that's can, the job. you can choose first. I would go for Monkey. 
then you have to go for alliance. Do it's I that have simple. To? Okay, so okay, Shane go goes for alliance. Uh, that is the it's draft. Not, it's not okay. It's not bad. For alliance, alliance versus monkey business. Let's hear what the casters have to say about this one. It is Owen and Draskal. You ready for a game one? Hello and welcome back to the casting panel here at Dream League with myself, Odie Pixel and Dreskel. And we are ready to take ourselves into the second series of the day. Alliance, of course, going up against Monkey Business this time. And as Shiva always wants to know, what's your opinion on the draft, Andy? I think Alliance is a pretty early game heavy, actually. So if you look at Slark, Night Stalker, Ember Spirit, they're like Slark is definitely the worst of the three in terms of laning phase. Like he's really, really bad. And then the other two are kind of mediocre at best, where you have Lich, you have Bristleback, and then you have Batrider, who is not as good as he used to be, but he can probably still bully a melee hero, I feel, in lane. But then again, Slark can always dispel the Napalm, so I guess the, the mid matchup is maybe a bit of a toss-up. But I think between what Alliance have tried to put together, their main goal is just trying to make sure that they win one lane really, really hard so that you don't reach that mid-game point to where the Ember and the Slark are both kind of running out of control. But... If that does end up happening, and Monkey Business are able to get that good start, then I can very easily see it just being a steamroll. Oh, let's see. It's going to be interesting to see these uh, two teams match up. I believe that is uh, the first time these two guys have met. Um, so we'll see how this one goes down bottom lane. Miracle. Oh, he's going to find three of them here. Will bounce himself begins. away. So Alliance will be able to secure themselves the bottom room. Top room will be taken here by the side of Monkey Business. They'll just hold on to that one and ensure that it looks like uh, they want to get Slark grabbing a hold of that one for the side. So, Miracle, of course, on this mid lane Slark. Amber in the safe lane. So Slark is going to have to go against up against the bat. But as you said, Dark Pact removing the Sticky Day Palm stacks. You think you'll do all right here? Well, it kind of depends. I yeah. mean, if it was anybody else but S4, I'd say Miracle probably does all right. But S4 is, this is one of his signature heroes, you know. This is one of the heroes he plays the absolute best. So maybe it's like 60-40 in favor of the bat. I mean, already we just see a miracle at level one with the, the point in the in the jump. Finding it very hard to get anywhere. Close enough for uh, too much CS top lane. Bulldog moving in with Ake on to fly, fly. Going for the tree line. The quill sprays are stacking out. One more. Will get the kill. That's going to be first blood there for Alliance. Crit trying to turn. Bulldog. Oh, is he going to get himself a double? He only just is going to go and do so. Will lose his life to Big Daddy. But that's a double kill on your flame bristle back at, uh, in less than a minute. That's kind of what I was talking about. They, they just have a very, very strong dual offlane going for them. We talked about the Lich change before a day or two ago, mentioning how it doesn't share experience with the enemy team anymore. You don't have to worry about running like all the way back to your tier two or whatever to get your sacrifice off. You can just throw it out. Uh, although I will say as that lane gets levels, the Veno Ember plus the Dazzle, it will be very good at killing Bristle because there's no way for that dual lane to break Flame Guard because Quills are obviously all physical damage, so they can kind of just chase you down. Mid lane, as we're seeing, S4 still maintaining the lead 8 for 2 against the 4 for 1 on Miracle. Still doing what he can to keep this Slark in check. And down on, of course, the off lane of Monkey Business. You've got this Night Stalker running some levels. Mid lane, S4 trying to move in. Miracle simply just dart packed off the napalm. And top lane looking for the rune here. Crit coming in with Fly. Let's get himself a DD here. So it's going to have a. Help them out a little bit in that top lane. Moon wrapping around towards where the pools will be happening. My nuts just juking it out. And the two position ones at the moment, Necro. Eight for two at the moment, Loader. And seven for two on the Ember. So pretty even between the two of them. Top lane just moving in onto Bulldog. He sees the DD, doesn't want to hang around with that one. But the lanes, you know, on the two sides at the moment, they've kind of leveled out and fairly equal. Both off lane is getting a fair bit of XP. If the laning phase is equal, then Monkey Business is pretty much winning. So the Slark and the Ember during the mid game, Bristle Miracle. is not a good matchup against either of them. He's got the stick charges here. As for, we'll just go in and get him to go back. He's just finding that timing and uh, the opportunity to get the kill on Slark, but Miracle obviously playing it safe. Only ever going two hand when he has got oh, those maxed out damage. charges. I mean, he's got himself quite low right now. 
He's gonna even have to ferry region, I think, at this point. You can't stay in lane with this HP. I like to live life on the edge a little bit, you know. Just CS at 20 health. Not really a big deal. Top lane again. Bulldog just moving in. Nice and close to, to Big Daddy. And here's CS doing pretty well. As we said, I believe it was the other day when we had Ake on the lich supporting up the off laner. And bottom lane, Moon trying to go for Loader here. Loader's got the backup of Minots. We're giving the old rundown here. And a couple of few more right clicks will do it. Loader's going to keep himself alive and they get themselves a nice kill down to the off laner. That's a really big kill, actually. And Bulldog, top lane. I'm trying to go for it, but these Quill Sprays popping off. Big Daddy and Crit. We'll be able to harass them back, and Bulldog will salve himself back up for round two if it kicks off. At this early game, you don't really expect a Night Stalker to die. I mean, it's, it, the first Night rolls around at four minutes, right? Just hit a couple seconds ago. This is the point where Moon can actually look to maybe gank top or something like that if he wants. Or he can try to look for Minots in the woods and just chase him down, prevent him from finding anything elsewhere. But alternatively, Alliance can also just send the Tusk top if they snowball in, there might be a gale, but I still feel like they could easily go for a few ganks here. Minot's coming back down to the bottom. Continue to help provide space here for Lotus to find the farm. On top lane, Big Daddy. 15 for 4, Bulldog. 16 for 5, so still on this bristleback, keeping up with the CS off the safe laner of Monkey Business. And it's just a case of of whichever team and it kind of overextends on these uh, lanes and gets caught out by the uh, the opposing dual laners. I mean, the Bristleback is still beating the Ember in terms of CS. Yeah. And Batrider and Necrophos are both kind of near the Moon. top. Oh, he's tried to go in here. He's going to want to go out and he's going to take the painful route potentially. If they could get one final touch on. No, the salve is there. Moon's going to be fine. Now I might think of trying to turn this round with a Void onto Loader. Loader will be able to cancel the salve. Both heroes just playing on the edge a little bit there. No one to fall on the bottom lane, though. Dancing around each other. Miracle getting a bit of space in the mid as S4 did back off to clear up some of the stacks he had towards the mid lane in those jungle camps. He's got 1k gold now towards his Blink Dagger. I'm going to unfortunately have a quick pause here from Crip. As hopefully we won't have any two major issues. But, I mean, it's so far, five minutes in. How do you think this game's panning out? Which team's going to be happier with this? Well, Alliance are still getting the better of the farm situation, but I don't know if the lanes are going well enough for them to really feel comfortable. I think the first few lasso ganks with the Blink Dagger from S4 are going to really dictate how this game's going to go. Like, if they can maybe kill the Ember a couple times, maybe they catch Miracle, they get some towers going for themselves, I think that they can kind of control the map a decent amount. But again, Necro and Bristleback as a hero matchup against the... I guess Necro's okay against Slark, because, you know, if you ever catch him out, it doesn't matter if he dark packs or not, you're still going to get the damage, and he's still going to pretty much die if he's below half HP. So I think yeah. Necro's actually all right against that. But I don't like him against Ember, because the team has only one method of really catching him out, and that's the bat. Snowball is very easy to dodge or even disjoint if you want to use Sleight of Fist to stop the stun from hitting you, and then you just go to a Remnant and you're fine. Uh, and then the other heroes on the team, like Venno, super frustrating to play as Bristle against uh, Bristleback and Bat both. Like they both hate playing against Venno because Plague Wards randomly drop, you get your blink canceled, you get gailed, you get kited around. And Bristleback is one of those heroes that wants to stay like as close as he can, you know, mm -hmm. to make sure you can get that quill spam off. But you can kind of very easily get kited with that kind of hero. So Monkey Business, they have a very interesting team in the fact that their laning phase is probably not meant to do as well as alliances, but they also have such a strong mid-late game that unless Alliance take a significant lead here, I'm feeling like they could be the favorites. Okay, well, we'll see if that does pan out. Apologies for the pause, of course, just waiting for uh, for the service to hopefully sort itself out as we are getting a bit of a high ping on some of the players. Uh, still, in terms of draft, I mean, could this be the game that we see Necrofoss win at Dream League? It could be, but again, this is a lot of pressure on Alliance to do stuff, you know? Like, think Empire game one in the last series where they were kind of just running in and Bulldog, oh, uh, the chains missed. He's being gale, but look at these Quill Sprays coming out. They are stacking up on the heroes on the side of Monkey Business. They might just find Big Daddy Notel to pop the charges and he gets, wow. oh, he gets the crit Venno as well. He's only gonna maybe get himself a triple here. Fly's gonna look to TP out. 
He will be able to get away, only just. All right, that was... This is... That helps. Yeah. <laughs> that helps a lot. Oh, they might just get this kill as well. There are the shards to block off Moon. He was to be able to go for the walk around. Not quite able to totally shed him out from the stairs there. But yeah, Bulldog at the moment is hitting on four kills on this Bristlebat Miracle with the wraparound. Oh! It might not matter though. One final touch still gets himself the kill onto Ake. So the rotation there from Miracle paying off. He gets themselves a second kill on the ball, but still five for two for Alliance. And I mean, Bristlebat can get very scary if he has a start as good as this. Yeah, that's that's what they need though too. Yeah. Is they didn't put that dual off lane together to not have Admiral Bulldog have a good game. The problem is they kind of lack burst damage. They just have damage over time on a Bristleback. And the longer it takes for you to kill them, the more Quill Sprays you're going to take. And they did reduce the damage threshold on how often Quill Spray actually goes off. And I think that buff might have actually been the reason why he got that those two kills instead of just dying. If you imagine he gets like two less Quills than that because the damage that he takes going from like, I don't know, 80% to 20 he might have been able to kill him there. That's four now. Couple of 1,500 towards his blink top lane. Bulldog, he's the focus. They want to go for him here. Silenced up. I don't know if he's going to be able yeah, to walk this one this off. He's got five one charges. Oh, oh he's got to live. No. The void is oh, there. The Only just though. But that, that's a big kill. I mean, getting that money there onto the Night Stalker. He's going to be very happy with that bit of bonus gold after shutting down Bristleback. Yeah, that kill definitely very, very important. If the Bristleback continues to snowball like that, he maybe gets to Vanguard, then you got real issues. Because the only way you can really hurt him at that point is magical damage, and like we already talked about, they just don't have the burst. Miracle. They need something. He's looking for this kill. I don't know if he's going to get it here. Minus looking for the turnaround. We'll put the Shadow Dance. S4, look at the Flame Break back, and he's going to get it nicely. Yeah, I've got the Shards as well, but no, they don't want to chase that deep. Miracle will be able to get himself away. Bulldog. Oh, the Quill Sprays are stacking up, and now Monkey Business say, well, we'll just kill you. Void to the face. Days. It looked very close to him being able to turn that around with the Quill Sprays, but and having that nuke on Night Stalker. Seven. He's... And he's nearly got a Midas as well. Looks like that's what he's going to be going for with the Gloves of Haste pickup and 1,100 in the bank. Yeah. All right, so... I guess the Snowballing Bristleback thing probably ain't going to happen this game. If you have deaths like that, where you just go to lane, die, go to lane again, die. Like, you can't afford those deaths. You need the experience. You need to make sure that you get some gold, get to one tanky early game item, and then you're going to be fine. But because of the fact that Moon is also having such a good game, I think that's kind of the great equalizer. So he's higher level than the Bristleback is right now from Bulldog. And now there's a tremendous amount of pressure on Loda and S4 to kind of carry this uh, mid early game that we're going to be seeing here in the next couple of minutes. Because next night rolls oh. around. Moon's going to be active. S4 has got his nine-minute blink pretty much any second now. He's yep. got the gold just heading back to the base, and uh, he'll have enough for that one. So a very good time, of course, on this blink dagger. And we'll see what kind of lane he decides to prioritize and, and try and help out to get these kills. I mean, where do you imagine we're going to see him head first? He can probably kill No-Tail with the help of uh, Ake and Bulldog, but they, they have to catch him without Flame Guard. The other alternative is maybe just trying to go for mid tower or push bottom tower. Catching out Slark is difficult because if he sees you coming, he's always going to dark pact. And then you can dark pack the lasso. He has haste rune bottled up too, so he can just walk it off. I don't know, man. This is a lot of work right now for S4. Fly, just getting himself some levels here on the off lane, top lane. Bulldog still trading farm here with Big Daddy. Big Daddy trying to make a, make a go on to Bulldog. In fact, Bulldog. Then we have to send around, give him a few slaps. Big Daddy, of course, has got six out, has got the remnants out. It's going to be very hard for a, a Bulldog to find a return. Return kill onto this map. He's going to be able to farm a little bit more safely. And Moon now, just a couple of hundred away from that Midas gold. Of course, we'll almost certainly got to see him try and rush for that Aghanim's after. Which at a, kind of a rate like this for your offlane uh, Night Stalker is not bad at all. To be honest, it's terrifying for Alliance that he has that. And Lumi brought up a really good point during the pregame analysis during the draft of how much vision restriction that Monkey Business actually have and the advantage that they have at nighttime with Slark and Nightstalker both being on their team. These heroes can see full Slark. like day vision, basically. And he really wants to set something up here with this Invis rune. No. But there are two heroes in the sideline for Alliance. And yeah, he's not going to go for that off the back of it. Top lane, Big Daddy moving in, but Ake is there on the sidelines, and yep, yeah, No-Tail will just zip himself straight out. Doesn't want to hang around. Crit, he's trying to get the push on the mid lane here with the Plague Wards. He's found an opening and a place to try and get himself up to that level six. 
That's going to be Midas now picked up from me. I wonder if this is just like the standard honey build, just Midas straight into Aghanims. I feel like it's incredibly strong against Alliance's draft, because like we talked about, it's it's a lot on S4 now. Can he find that space? Can he find the pickoffs and get some really key hero kills? And maybe the Slark, the, the Ember, obviously the two best targets. He's able to get them really nice deny. 61 base damage versus a Oh, he goes go. in with a blink as well onto Miracle. Ake's there with the chain force. Do they have the damage? No, he gets the shadow dance off. Miracle looking to jump away. As for an Ake looking for the chase. Ake actually gets the slow here. Miracle will be able to purge off the off the slow there. Oh, oh the shards! The shards! Minus on point! And now Crit is going to be in a lot of trouble as well. And load up may even just throw the Reaper Scythe in. Oh, he's the timing a little bit off, but they get the kill nonetheless. And uh, two tasty kills there for the side of Alliance. That was nice. Those Not shards. Lovely play from my nuts, yeah. Yeah, that, that was the downtown fadeaway jumper. Very, very cool stuff. So we haven't really talked about the Necrophos that much. It's been a lot of theory crafting of what they're going to do mid game. Is he dead here? Uh, he might have been a little bit of trouble. Yeah, he's a dead. lot of bit of trouble. Man, I, I really underestimated the amount of damage that, that combo would do. At least he's got the Midas. This is Midas on cooldown. That's the real kind of... I think it is, yeah. Oh, it's going to be for 10 seconds. Oh, painful stuff here for the side of Monkey Business. Top lane, Bulldog coming in. Ake's there as well. Going to give it some here against Big Daddy, but Big Daddy remnants away to the camp. We'll be fine. He's going to look for the TP out. Back to base, keep it safe. Loader's farm. He has, is that the completed mechanism coming out? Yes, it is. So he's got the mech now complete on his necro, safely. Yeah, it's a little bit different from the build that we saw uh, Big Daddy go previously. I think he went like Treads might as Blink and then Aghanims, something like that. I've oh, seen a lot of variation on the necro builds. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's kind of one of those heroes that you build based on what your team is supposed to do. So in this game, I think he feels that his team is meant to really five man, because if you don't five man against Slark and Night Stalker and Ember, you're going to probably get picked off a lot. They have very good mobility between those three heroes, and they're great in small scale fighting. So we're going to see a potential die if you're on a loader. Go for loader. Loader has got backup incoming, but is it going to be there quick enough? Jumping straight in, Big Daddy. Loader trying to fight against it. Now with the mech, they might be able to turn this snowball in onto Moon. Moon trapped by the tower. The Shallow Grave will get cast in time. Moon trying to walk away. Big Daddy now in a bit of trouble. There's going to be the Scythe straight onto Moon. He's down now for 60 seconds. They're looking for Big Daddy, and they're going to get him as well. That's going to be the second kill here for the side of our Alliance as they perfectly turn around a gank the monkey business were looking to execute onto Loader. That was a perfect reaction. And it almost seemed like Alliance had a pretty good idea of what was going to happen because S4 was pretty much on point, was right there, got the lasso off, dragged him out of the tower. And sure, they get those two very important kills. And I believe one of them was also a Reaper death, correct? Yeah, the Night Stalker is dead for a very long time, so he's definitely the one who got Reapered there. Radiance Middle Tower. Oh, on down and Miracle. How's his farm looking? He's got 1600 gold on himself down. He's going to pick up the Shadow Amulet. So trying to find that early Shadow Blade. But I mean, with the, I mean, once you've got the Shadow Blade on this Slark, who are you looking to try and pick off on the side of Alliance? Because I feel there's, there's quite a few targets that you don't really want to just jump on. Well, you probably can't kill Loda because he has mech. You can maybe kill Ake and S4. Those are probably the easiest targets for you to kill. Because even though you can Firefly, you can't like force that for anything out of Pounce once S4 picks that up. So you have the damage uptime, and that's the most important part. The other heroes are just way too tanky. Like Bristleback has his passive, don't want to hit into that. Tusk can Snowball, and then you pretty much lose all your attack time when the Pounce is there because he's just stuck in a Snowball and then he walks away. And then there's a mech on Loda, so you pretty much don't want to go for him. Just takes too long to take him out. So yeah, there's not really too many great targets that he can catch off on his own. But say for instance, Big Daddy's there, and they just go in, then yeah, you probably get a kill. No big deal. S4 has got the flaming lasso available. I'm spotting this out. The big D knows though. Top lane, Gale. A little tickle the back of Bristol. I'm not looking to follow it up there. And the Alliance do have a free man top. Big Daddy just looking to cut the creep wave bottom to try and get it the uh, workings onto this tier one. He has fly there on the side with a backup. Big Daddy just getting himself out back behind the Creep Wave. And in fact, he is he's just going to TP back to base. Okay, just looking to get his mana regen back up. Top lane Crip. Let's found himself level 7, of course, with the Medallion as well on this Venom. 900 gold in the bank. Big Daddy moving in. Going to continue to try and find this tier 1. We yet really see Alliance commit a lot on the defense. S4 is there, will reveal himself. We'll lead the Searing Chains and 
Starting to once again force Big Daddy back here with the napalm. And Big Daddy will be unable to find this tier one for this point in time. Top lane. And with a void. It's just a bit of a tickle though. Bulldog feeling very confident and staying in the lane at this point with the amount of farm that he has got. Both teams just kind of avoiding each other, playing around them. No one really yet to look for any kind of super aggressive ganks, but that might change now as, as Miracle does have the Shadow Blade complete. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling a bit anxious for Alliance too. Like, when I see a passive game, I'm always going to think that Monkey Business are getting the better of it. Like, even if their heroes aren't necessarily farming as quickly, their heroes scale better into the mid-late game. So every time that Alliance isn't making use of their lasso when it's off cooldown, I just feel like Monkey Business are getting out a little bit ahead. But here comes S4. He wants to try to do something. He wants to find Moon, but there is Miracle behind him. And now S4 blinking in. Miracle might try and turn this with a Shadow Blade reveal and straight onto S4. S4 trying to get himself out of there, but the power's holding him in place. Will still be able to get away with the Flame Break. Pushing back Miracle. So S4 lucky to live through that one. Radiance middle tower and they'll know that the Shadow Blade is now out on the Slark. And off the back of that alliance, grouped up as four. Looks like they'll just try and take this tier one from the top lane. It's a good call. When you have five people up here, you might as well just go for the objective if you're not going to find the pick. And It was actually very close to S4 just getting killed there. If Moon had his second Void up, he probably would have killed him for sure. I think it was like three seconds on cooldown. But getting this tower is a step in the right direction. You've got the Crimson Guard up on Bulldog now. 17 minutes there, not bad. Yeah. Miracle. Does he want to try and jump on someone here? He's oh, all God, on his no. own. Maybe he waits for TPs, yeah. I mean, now that Loader's gone, he's going to try for Ake here. Bulldog moving in, and well, Miracle's going to get away with that one. Gets himself a kill. We'll get caught up by the stun, but got the Shadow Dance off in time. Bulldog Miner's trying to chase him. Now S4 wrapping around as well. They do have a lasso available. Now that the Dark Park's down, they might use oh, it if they want to secure it, and they will. Making sure that they get the kill onto Miracle. Bringing him low. It takes them a bit of effort, but a big kill nonetheless. They do find it. 50 seconds now down for Miracle, and that's going to be the four staff complete here for S4 on his bat 18 minutes in. I don't think Miracle assumed that S4 was still in the area. Probably thought he went back to go farm or something like that. And you can even see they have aggressive wards, so he probably would have spotted S4 pretty quickly if he were to teleport to a tier 2. And he decided to go for the, the big play, get a kill, and try to get out. I think maybe he used the Shadow Dance a, a bit preemptively. Because he kind of used it right away. As soon as the snowball was coming in, he just wanted to stop all incoming damage. And Alliance, going to abuse the fact that he's dead. He's pushing into this middle tier 1 right now. They do have another glyph. They're going to pop it. But 15 seconds still on the Slark. And that's going to be more than enough time here to finish off this tower. Bottom lane, Big Daddy continuing to play very aggressively. Look at those drums complete when he gets it delivered out. 11 for 5. Alliance certainly with the, the favorable amount of farm overall. But top of the net worth is still Miracle on his Slark. Only a couple of hundred ahead of Loader, though. I'll uh, be interested to see what he opts for on top of the Shadow Blade. Now, is this a game because of the Bristleback and such that you go straight for the Silver Edge? And, well, there's your answer. Yeah. Okay, he's working towards the sound. So he's looking for that Silver Edge to counter the Bristle. And, oh, can they find Miracle here? This is going to be a massive lasso, and it is indeed straight onto Miracle. He's already used a Dark Pattern. Oh! 80 seconds of death for the Slark at just 19 minutes in. That's going to be a bit of a kicker, Andy. So the thing that I really like about the, the Necrophos in this draft is pretty much what we just saw. A lot of the time when we saw Necro earlier, there wasn't really a way to pull somebody so far out of position that you could get that Reaper Scythe off in an ideal world, right? Like finding the pick opportunity is a lot harder. And that's also why when we saw Big Daddy play it, he went blank because he wants to be able to get to his target to use the Reaper. But in this game, the target gets to come to him. S4 is just going to deliver it to him on a freaking silver platter and be like, here's your Reaper target, please use ulti, and then reap benefits. So they get the tier 2 safe lane for free. Monkey business not able to really contest at all. And they are trying to pressure other lanes, but they realize that Alliance are already kind of back in the area, so they can't linger too long. They still have some aggressive warding up, so maybe they want to try to go for a pick. It's a very dangerous thing to do, though, when you're by tier 2s. My nuts. Has been crippled, and now with Big Daddy moving in as well, with Monkey Business will find themselves a kill there onto the Tusk. S4 coming in as well with the backup of Ake. They do have the Drain Frost available. 
We'll see if they decide to try and fight into this one. Loader has now arrived as well. Reaper side still on cooldown. As far as he's going to try and lead in here with a Lasson. So on one that's going to be moon backing off. They found the tower. Big Daddy will remnant away, but now he's for forcing forward, trying to get in range. It blinks forward and will get the lasso straight onto moon, dragging him back between them all. The shallow grave comes out to so the oh. Reaper side. He's going to be averted, so it's a good job here for Moon, as he'll be dead, but not for as long as Alliance may have liked if they were able to get that ult. Yeah, that was definitely a sore reaction from Loda. He could have very easily cancel cast that. As soon as the Grave comes out, you're just like, ah, just wait it out. Because the damage isn't dealt until the Scythe actually hits anyway, so there's like a one second delay. You can even have a little bit of a buffer on it and just make sure the hero can't walk away with Grave on before he gets Reapered, but... Still gets the kill, not the end of the world. 30 second less res timer though. I'm sure Moon's going to be happy about that one. The one thing about the Alliance's team too, Slow is taking a little bit of damage here from Big Daddy. He's going to go back to his spirit though. But the the team is not really so good at killing Roche except for the Bristle. And I guess they have Sigil too. So maybe it's not as bad as I originally had thought. But Monkey Business team is real bad at killing Roche. They need like a Vlad's on somebody I think to even contemplate doing it or a Medallion at least. Bulldog, well, he's going to take liberty here to, s to clear out these ancients here from the side of monkey business. My nuts, he's going in onto Big Daddy Nake and loaded there as well. They've not got the Reaper Scythe available here. And Daddy Notel will be able to ram it back up the lane. So he gets himself out. Now with the smoke up from the side of Monkey Business, they're looking for the wraparound onto Alliance to catch them off guard. Moon leading in on Tess Foy, does get the Firefly out, force stuffing away, can he get himself up to the high ground? Bulldog's turned up and now with the rest of the gang, Ake will fall, but he gets the Chain Frost off. Bounces once between Fly and Crit, Chris gonna TP straight out, Fly will pay with his life. Now with the Shards beautifully blocking in Crit, he turns around with the Gale, but that's all it's gonna be, will go down as well. So they give themselves two, they do lose Ake there on the Lich, but Alliance are gonna be happy with the fact that Monkey Business's smoke didn't achieve anything more there for the team. Well, it, I mean, it's less than not even achieving, they just died, you know? I mean, that's that's pretty much the opposite of what you want to happen when you smoke, but here comes the Lions with the use of that goo and a little bit of the sigil. They're going to try to go for Roshan here. Both supports dead on monkey business, so they are not looking to contest. And I guess for now, I mean, Alliance still have a... Still got a pretty good advantage. Tried to find a lasso there, couldn't quite get it off in time. Just scaring about Big Daddy and Jia, they'll get this Aegis. And for the next fight as well, Loader has got that ultimate back online. Let's see if he's able to catch anyone out again. Regardless of the fact that Miracle was caught out earlier, still keeping himself very well at the top of that board in terms of net worth level with Loader. Aghanim's well on its way here for Moon. And he's got the Ogre Club, the point booster, 1400 towards that final two couple of bits. And that's going to be the Silver Edge now complete here on the Slark. Bristle back has finished the SMY though, so he's still going to be relatively tanky, even with the passive removed. We'll see if Miracle's able to catch him off guard. But 15 for 7, Alliance still. After that, at Roshan attempts as well, with the Aegis on loader in a very comfortable position. The major concern for Alliance is going high ground. So they have Bristleback. It's pretty tanky. Does a decent amount of damage and Miracle. Oh, loader. I Miracle's going right. to ignore loader, yeah. Loader's just going to hang around mid here with Big Daddy. Trading hits, Big Daddy. Okie dokie doo. Will still oh, get himself out. Loader was hoping for the damage to come through before it finished it off, but not quite there. Yeah, I mean, I can see what he's going for. Yeah, if, he, yeah. if that play if were, happens... Yeah. yeah, oh, it's massive. Yeah, then he can just go straight for Tier 2, maybe even do a little bit of pressure to the Tier 3, but if it fails, then, well, you got to wait a little while. But Scythe isn't too long of a cooldown anyway. Yeah, so it's... it's it I think it's... Enough. Yeah, it's 85 seconds at level 2. So. Ooh, hello. There's an Aghanim's on your Venomancer. That Aghanims. So, I read the change to Poison Nova where... Actually, I'm gonna have to hold that thought. I think Alliance kind of want to push into this tier too. But they changed it so it's always 16 seconds. And then they also scale the damage differently so that it's around the same, right? So they nerfed the damage on the non Aghanims Poison Nova, kept the duration at 16 at all levels, and now the Scepter damage does 110 and then still lasts for 16 at level 3. So I'm not actually sure if that's a damage Oh, S4 or not. wants to get rid of Crit. If Crit can get off this poison over which he can before he dies, our monkey business able to do anything off the back of it. This is an Axe poison over. It is going to tick him down, and Alliance, realizing that they don't want to hang around. They have got the regen, of course. They're with the pulse and the mech. And it looks like they will be able to just wait it out here. So not too much of a huge issue as monkey business couldn't find any kind of follow-up. 
but a very aggressive blink nonetheless from S4, and it does pay off. Yeah, I mean, they, they force the Veno to ulti like that, and they have to end up backing in the end, but that doesn't really matter too much. They'll be happy with the Tier 2, I'm sure. They still have pretty much all map control, and the, there's only one Tier 2 left right now for the side of Monkey Business, and it's the bottom one. So once that is down, then they're going to be very diligent about their warding, and I would really like to see a smoke out of them sometime soon, because I haven't really seen one outside of the one where they ended up getting uh, two heroes killed. You know, they haven't really been trying to re-establish map control for themselves. They more or less just been letting Alliance do what they want and always come to them. Vlad's now on the Tusk, so something else to offer to these pushes when they group up. And now, talking about the cause, Miracle on top of the Silver Edge. He's got 1,500 gold. What, what do you think he needs to get next on this slug? Does he needs to tank up? Does he need a BKB this game? What, what, what is he thinking? I think the typical Scotty Vasher is yeah. okay. I think also getting BKB is fine. Because you don't really want to get Reapered ever. And, I mean, that's like the scariest thing for Miracle right now. It's the one thing on the team outside of Batrider that just guarantees that he is in a crap load of trouble. Like, if he gets Reapered and there's Agonims at some point in the game, that's a two-minute death timer. Where Slark is supposed to be that hero who can just get in and out of fights over and over again. And just keep coming back in with full HP and killing a hero. Then going out, then coming back with full HP, killing somebody else. Can't do that if you get Reapered. So, for his sake, I think he needs a little bit of HP. Uh, BKB's good, Scotty's good, even Lincoln's I wouldn't hate. There is a Bristle, but most of the time you have to assume that you're stopping the initiation with the Lincoln's. Alliance are ready to go. 27 minutes in, now knocking on the tier 3's. Big Daddy, and nothing more than a tickle at the moment with a slight of fist. He just hasn't got the items to do the damage, did off for that Maelstrom. Man, they just got that for free. Ah, but nothing that Monkey Business could do to stop that. Miracle was looking to come in from the back side. I couldn't quite do anything. He's just going to make himself and make his way back to the base. Waiting for Alliance to potentially overextend, but Alliance are going to feel very confident with their position at the moment. Just hitting onto the tier, onto the onto the racks, in fact, and more with the lesser onto Moon, bringing him back into the center of it all. Slider Fist comes out, Reaper Scythe comes in, but the Shallow Grave is there. Moon will live through the initial instance, but almost certainly will still go down, and he does. That's going to be the first casualty. Ake getting lows, Miracle's trying to chase it down. Will kill the Lich, load up with the right clicks onto Fly. Fly healing up Crit, and now they're going to chase down Miracle. If they can kill this Slark, there's going to be a huge kill here for the side of Alliance. Crit is able to find the kill onto Minus. Miracle trying to jump away with the Flame Break. Bringing him back down. Has got the Silver Edge. Can he get himself out? No! Bulldog will finish him off. Slider for Searing Chains. Holding Bulldog and Loader in place. They're trying to move in here with Crit as well. We'll get the Gale onto Loader. Loader ready to turn this round though with the Shiva's Guard. Now with the right clicks. Big Daddy with a Slider Fist. Now with a Flame Break. Bring Big Daddy into the center at all. Bulldog here with the right click. The Shallow Grave from Fly. Keeping Big Daddy alive, but he's not got the mana to get himself out. Looks for the Slider Fist dodge. It doesn't matter. Will still fall. And Crit and Fly, the only ones left alive in the base here. As Elias did lose two. But they're still going to feel confident hanging around with the push here. Bulldog, Loader, and S4, the three cores are all still alive. God, how did they actually live through that poison over? I mean, two of them ended up dropping to crit's damage, but the fact that they're still kind of sitting around here and able to get even the rain tracks is a bit of a surprise. Moon is ready maybe to try and... Oh, is he going to try and go for S4? No, he's going to give him a bit of a void. That is going to be it, but yeah, nonetheless... That's going to be a BKB now done on S4, ready for the next blink. And S4's blinks have been pretty huge every time, kicking off the fight and catching Monkey Business off guard when the Monkey Business themselves are waiting for the right time to jump in on the defense. And S4 says, we're starting the fight now, boys. Yeah, I mean, he's been the selfless selfless mid bat rider player. 1, 0, and 10. It's, he is like Text all assists right now. Yeah, he's just finding the opportunities for picks and helping his team just push in. So really great stuff coming in here from game one out of Alliance. There were some doubters. You know, I, I even agreed to a, to a degree that their mid-game lineup for Monkey Business was crazy strong, assuming they could get out of the laning phase okay. And it seems like Alliance did well enough in that regard to keep themselves in a pretty good spot. Being one rain tracks down, though, not the end of the world for Monkey Business at all. They just have to get, like, maybe one or two items more on the Ember Spirit, on the Slark. And for the first time in a while, they're going to take the initiative here. They've smoked up. They're going to try to find somebody. Let's see what they can get. Moon leading the way. We'll be into Loader if Loader comes any closer to the east. And Miracle, why is he going to be able to find this thing? Know that they're there. 
Alliance on tour, where they're keeping themselves safely grouped together, and the silence is going to be onto Bulldog. Maybe not the ideal target to start on. Now Loader waltzing in with the Shiva's God. It's a nice poison over here by Crit. Crit will get taken down with the Shallow Grave, keeping himself alive here. No one to die as of yet. Now with the less for Lasso, holding Big Daddy in place. Nova was cast, but it doesn't matter because of the side of the Alliance, they just want to continue going. They're not scared of this damage at this point. There's going to be the Grit at the side on to fly. Dead for 78 seconds. They did lose Ake amongst it all. Miracle. Does he want to go back in here with Moon? I don't think he does. The four heroes of Alliance healing themselves up rather nicely. And again, we're seeing a situation. Ooh. Does he blink forward there from, from S4? Seeing if he could do anything about Big Daddy. But Big Daddy gets himself an Invis Rune and does get out. And again, I mean, this Axe, it just doesn't seem to be doing enough against Alliance's lineup. The Venom just doesn't seem to have that much impact with the damage that he does. Well, the thing is, he is actually doing the majority of damage in the team fight. I, I guess it's, yeah, the, the rest yeah. of his team. Most of the time, it's like his damage and then a couple of sleight of fists. But Miracle's not really able to stay in the fight for that long because he doesn't have the item progression quite yet. Like I said, he needs more time. He needs more items. And No-Tail's pretty much the same way. He gets lassoed, pulled back in, forced out. Melee Rack should be dropping here in favor of Alliance and Monkey Business now down a full lane. They still have a tier two bottom, so that's okay for them, but their top tier three is definitely uh, next on the plate, I feel, unless Roshan spawns in between the time where Alliance decide to go back and heal and then try to push again, in which case I think Roshan will probably be the next point of contention. But Alliance, man, they, they knew very well what their lineup was built for and they've executed very well. Let's see what goes on uh, in terms of the next item pick of an I guess with the plate mail, do you think he's going for the AC here after the Aghanims on uh, on Moon? Well, I like AC a lot yep. just because they have to deal some kind of physical damage up against this Bristleback, up against the, the Necrophos as well. And the other thing is oh, you're playing Necro. against uh, a team with a Vlads, so not having any minus armor or uh, nothing to offset the Vlads is kind of a pain. Well... Load up now with that Ags. This is troublesome. Complete. I mean, I've got to be honest, he's maybe, you know, misjudged a few against the Shallow Grave, but overall, he's hit some pretty big ults, and I feel it's been the most effective Necro performance we've seen. Now Miracle, he's been caught out, and if they can kill this Slark, now dead for 60 oh, plus and Roshan seconds. Just oh. spawned. Like, it's just as if now. Alliance just wrote these sequences themselves with that spawn time. And there's not a lot the business can do with the Slark down. And I don't think they're even going to attempt to do anything here, either. And once they've got this, I mean, Elias will be ready to try and power down the bottom. This is nice from Big Daddy, though, getting the creep where pushed out, so they won't be able to get that tier 2 straight away. We they might gonna... just run top, though. Yeah, they'll, they'll certainly look for some more damage on the base. s actually backed up here. He wants to try and catch out Big Daddy, but Big Daddy's there quick with the reactions. Zip zamp straight back behind the tier 2 on the bottom lane. And they'll start to try and push this one back out, get that final out to tier 2. And S4 now sitting on 2.8k gold. Dazzle's going to be able to pick himself up a mech here for this next fight. I mean, every little helps at this point of the game, and, and Monkey Business certainly need every little thing that they can find. Yeah, they're going to have to hope that their high ground defense with Plague Wards is going to be enough. So right now, that's all they have to fall back on. Although there is a Veil now picked up by the Veno. Ooh, hello. So the Veil increases the damage that you deal by 25%, which and is huge. No one on the lights has BKB, I don't think, on any of the heroes, have they? They've not no. built BKB at all. No, I don't so. think so. Okay, oh, no, there, there is one. S4, of course. Yeah. yeah. Is that a 10 second still? Yeah, no, it's nine. Okay. Here we go. So, are they going to start to push? I mean, what, do Alliance. Is, uh, is that the A? Oh, Bulldog. This is big. I mean, this just makes the push that much stronger. Offsets the uh, AC that Moon could be building as well. Oh, what a dark pact. I'm pretty sure that wasn't even intentional, but the timing of that was still pretty damn cool. There we go. They're going to find the tower, and they're ready to just hang around for more. I mean, they could just frontline this against the lineup. They are going to back up. I mean, top lane, the creep wave is starting to push in. We'll see if anyone decides to back up and try and get that one swinging back in favor for the side of Alliance. I really think Alliance want to force it. I mean, they have pretty much everything they need to end the game, I feel. There is 4k gold at the moment. What's uh, Big Daddy just bought? He spent a lot of crit there with a the poison over onto two. Bulldog and Loader getting caught out. Shiva's popped by Loader. is ready to turn around. Crit getting low will get taken down. That's going to be the first death of this fight. 
Big Daddy trying to frontline it, moving in with the Flame Guard. Lodi gets four staffed out of this one. Mech's popped as well. Lodi getting fairly low here. He has, of course, got the Aegis. He's going to be back from round two. The Chain Frost bounces a couple of times there from Ake. And now here comes Loda back again. Miracle getting low, trying to shadow dance himself out of this fight. Will be able to leap away. The Slight of Fist, whittling them down, oh. but it's still not enough damage. BKB's pop IS4, blinks forward, gets the Lesso onto Moon now. And that's going to be a Reaper Scythe, finishing that's off the Night Stalker. 90 seconds, no buyback. Now the buyback from Mind Nuts. He wants to rejoin this fight, realizing the Lions are in a very good position to keep the tempo going. And there we go. Busu travels in. Snowball now into Big Daddy No Tail. Shards back onto Miracle. He's been kept alive here by the Shallow Grave. But Big Daddy's stuck in the middle of it all as well. He's going to go down. Yeah, it's mega kill streak for Bordo. The quill sprays were just too much stacking oh, up. Oh, the courier died. Oh, that was the eight. Oh, it was the finish by Yone. So, I mean, Big Daddy's dead nonetheless. And he was actually going to have something a little more than a Maelstrom if that was delivered successfully. But again, another massive fight for Alliance. 26 to 12, 36 minutes in. I don't know, man. It's going to be a hard one for Monkey Business to pull themselves back into. They did defend their racks, though, for now. Not to say that Alliance will just come right back and try to push it in again, but... For the time being, they've managed to keep their base alive, which is obviously the main goal here in this situation. Bulldog, though, just not caring at all. Just wants to go in and hit the building. Right, he's just going to try and take the racks in. Now with S4 leading in with the lasso onto Crit. Fly all by some time here for the Venomancer with the Shallow Grave. Miracle's trying to do what he can with the right clicks, but he just can't fight through the Crimson Guard, all the defensive builds, uh, on items that Bulldog's got on himself. And now, now that's just going to be the bottom set of racks. Almost certainly gone. They've got a fortification. Ember Spirit now back in the game. Miracle's still alive. Nice Stalker will return in five seconds, but that's going to be a second set of racks down. Lions will take that. Uh, they waltz off and, and look to regain their strength before potentially going back onto the top lane and look for mega creeps at 37 minutes in. This is a pretty convincing performance so far from the side of Alliance. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of what it had to be, though. In, in this style of lineup, if you get even a little bit behind against the Sark, against the Amber Spirit lineup, you are going to have such a bad time. Like, they're just going to run at you. Slark is so difficult to kill on his own unless you have a, a perfect bat initiation. And even then, say, for instance, you know, there's maybe one or two extra items up on that Slark right now, and the Scotty's even finished, it becomes so difficult to actually kill that hero because he has to be lassoed into a Reaper even now, and his farm isn't what I would call stellar. Like, Silver Edge, one ultimate orb is... You know, it's all right, Ooh. but it's not great. And here comes the double lasso. So I believe Check it's... Check this out. It's 400 range, right? between the lasso targets that it can be, and then you just get both. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's 400. I don't know if Monkey Business are going to be prepared for this one. Let's see what he can do here, S4. Still, notably, has not died yet, and neither has loaded. This has been a solid performance from the two cores of Alliance. Yeah, I mean, poor S4 just can't get any freaking kills. He's still only got one kill right now. It's 38 minutes in. Guy's got 16 assists to his name. He has done a lot of work. And the net worth difference, of course, not looking too great here for Monkey Business. They're only holding on to this final set of racks here on the top lane. Yeah, we'll have the courier back up in 10 seconds, so Big Daddy will finally be able to pick up the complete in Mjolnir. There we go, Lights. Ready for the front lining. Bulldog leading the charge. S4 is open to go in and get a couple. He's actually just going to go for the mid lane, but it's the lasso on lasso action as the Lotus Orb was out there from Moon. And now they might be able to turn it. Miracle gets the pounce. S4 just spots the BKB, though. He's going to be all right. Snowball leading across won't connect. Space being kind of created there on the top lane. Now S4 backing up as Miracle's trying to chase it down here. We can see if he can find anyone. Moon will be able to walk this off as well. Miracle, he can kill S4. He's going to keep himself safe. Jumps back up to the high ground. Now Bulldog Loader and the gang returning to the top lane. They want to try and find these Megas. They did, of course, find that Tier 3 just now. With a little bit of a havoc being caused in the mid lane, drawing Monkey Business's attention away, and Bulldog goes straight in. Crit still has the Poison Nova. Maybe going to want to use it here, but the Bash coming out from Bulldog, he's getting fairly low. Slide of Fist here from Big Daddy, still not doing an awful lot. Crit will get the Poison Nova onto two, now with the Snowball leading in. Crit's going to get punched up by Minuts. They do lose Bristleback. Bulldog's down in. Oh, the they chain. chain Frost bounces. Scythe onto Miracle, but the Shallow Grave is there in time. Now it's a triple kill for Big Daddy, bringing himself back into it. And Ake and S4 incredibly low. 
Okay, we'll be able to glimmer himself out. Oh, the slider fish just a little bit short. Anyway, Aki does get the TP out. And the defense is real, and so is the gold swing. A lot of money in XP, of course, going the way of monkey business after that fight. And they do keep the racks alive. 5.8k gold on Big Daddy. Now, the question is, does he just go for the rapier? Hmm, that is a good question, actually. Does he go crit instead? He's I don't know. a lot I of money. I mean, Rapier seems like a good choice just because of the fact that you're already double racks. Your tier three in the top is dead. The curry is. Oh, is, is he sending out to shot? He's going shot. Yeah, I think Rapier is fine, honestly. I think it's a good choice. He's maybe deciding uh, okay. against no, it. No, I, think, the last he, I think he's gone Scardy. Yeah, he's picked up a, an orb of Venom. Oh, has he? Yeah. Okay. Scardy, really? Interesting. Beyond Scardy. Guess, because of the fact that the Venomancer ulti is doing so much damage during these team fights, and he's also already bought a Mjolnir, it also makes him a reasonable target for putting the, the shield on himself. Because normally for this team, maybe you put it on the Slark, maybe you put it on Moon. But you really wouldn't put it on yourself, right? But now if you have the Scotty, you have 2300 health, you can definitely put it on yourself and have it do things. Whereas before, you know, Ember stat gain is not really that good. So you wouldn't have much HP to utilize the effect of the Mjolnir shield. And it was the double, double, uh, double Scotty pickup here, of course, as uh, yep. Miracle's got his finished. So here comes the smoke. I like this move for Monkey Business. Their lanes are pushed out, I guess, enough. I mean, they're, they're not past the river, but they still have like a minute or two before they're going to have to worry about defending their base, and oh, they can look for four. something here. Oh, he wants to jump down, but he's now revealed himself to the entire lineup of Monkey Business. Noble coming in on some Miracle. The slides as well from Big Daddy. Lotus has been dropped off the slug, so it's going to be very hard to take him down. Crit, incredibly low here. The Shallow Grave keeping alive, him alive. Will, no, the heals oh, as well. Oh, Big God. Daddy. 99 seconds on the sidelines. Thanks to the Reaper Scythe there from Loda and Bulldog continues to move in for more. Looking for Fly. Fly's got the Shallow Grave available. Moon trying to turn it. Lotus Orb onto the Night Stalker. Bulldog looking to go in for Fly, but now he's decided to back up a Miracle. Oh, hello. Gets the jump. Gets the leash onto Bulldog. Has he got the damage, though, to bring down this Bristle? Bulldog's just going to try to stand there and fight. He's still alive. The heals from the low ground for Loda aren't quite enough, though. 76 seconds for Bristle back to go down. Ends up being a two for one. Moon. Is he thinking about chasing for more? He's got to be a little bit careful here as there are still four members on the side of the Alliance alive. Miracle wants to keep this fight going. Oh, there's a haste rune. S4. And a signature rune picked up. So it's a two for one. I mean, they did lose Big Daddy to the Reaper's Scythe, and they did lose yeah. a tier four as well. But without Bulldog, their base aging potential is, I'd say, a little limited in comparison to what it would be normally. And the other thing, too, is these ultis from the Venomancer are always on point. He's always hitting like 3, 4, 5 every single time. And if he didn't do that, then the damage output from their team would be just negative. Oh, again, S4 loves getting a bit of a tangle with his tingles. Lasso onto Lasso with Miracle with the Lotus Orb. And straight onto S4. They're looking for a return kill, and they might just get it. Can he get himself over? Yes, he can. Four stars over. So we'll get himself out. 43 minutes. Monkey Business are holding the base, and they will have. Big Daddy No Tail back in the game in 10, 10 seconds of time. Uh, here comes the Hex. Okay. So Loda. But there's all these Lotus Orbs on the side. You know, they've, yes. they've got to be careful. I mean, we just yeah. saw what can happen, right? Indeed. And they love their Maelstroms. You know, we're seeing Moon picking up one for himself here as well on the Night Stalker. Yeah, I really like Lotus Orb as an item when you start getting to the stage where there's already a lot of single target abilities that you have to worry about. Like Reaper Scythe, obviously you're still going to take the damage, but you know maybe for whatever reason Loda's low from uh, getting Poison Overcast on him. He can get a kill that way. Another smoke, they're going to scout out Roche. Did he go for it? If they can sneak this one. Miracle's not... Oh, Miracle has found my nuts. And Bulldog, oh, he's going to tank this full smoke, full on. Has he got the strength to live for it, or they're going to start to go in? Weaves there, gets forced off to weigh the Glimmer Cape as well, keeping Bulldog safe. They do have a gem here on the side of Monkey. Bulldog's ready to go back in with the Crimson Guard pop. Minus. Stepped himself away here. The slide comes out now with the lasso from S4. Dragging Moon out of the fight. The Chain Frost is big, but the Poison Nova's also nice from Crit. Bulldog's just going to look for the straight TP out. He doesn't want to be a part of this fight. He's going to leave Loda and Ake all on their own here. And Loda will get the ult off, but again, the Shallow Grave's there in time. Crit's going to live for it. Loda loses his life now. Dead for 78 seconds. And now they might just find Minus as well. Minus was trying to chase down Moon, but Moon's just kiting him. They'll lose Minus. An alliance losing two heroes in their own jungle, and they don't have an answer for it. Monkey business with a very successful smoke gang.
There was very little, if any, coordination in that fight from Alliance. Like, everyone was totally on different pages when it came to who do we want to attack? Are we going to Reaper the right target? Even in the world where Crit dies to that Reaper Scythe, Loda did it out of a necessity move, right? Like, he didn't have another target because Loda dragged Moon off to the side, thought he was on the low ground. Moon goes back up to the high ground after the lasso ends, so he's not even isolated anymore. He just pops Loda Sword by himself, walks away. And that, during that whole time, Miracle and Big Daddy are just going ham. So when you don't get that lasso into Reaper, you can see the difference in the outcome of the team fights. And now, all of a sudden, monkey business, they got Aegis up. Oh boy. I mean, monkey business is... Uh, let's have a look at the graph. If they turned it around at all, they, well, they are starting to swing it back round here. Did he just buy full Guardians? He had to have had the mech before, right? Ah, oh, he did, yeah. Dazzle yeah. picked to the mech about 33 minutes in before I got that one. Yeah. But now with that upgrade, yeah. Something else to add to Monkey's lineup. 2k gold on Big Daddy. I mean, it's an interesting build for them. What would you make? Why do you feel he did opt for the Mjolnir Scardi this game rather than kind of the standard getting that cleave damage out and getting the Daedalus? I think it's because he was under so much pressure in lane. Yep. Like that dual offlane, he ended up dying, I think, once or twice in that laning phase in of itself. When you have a game like that, I think that for the cost, Maelstrom can give you the same amount of damage in a team fight that a Battle Fury can, as long as you're getting like one or two lightning procs. And plus, they did just buff it as well. I think it bounces more, right? No, it still bounces four times. Never mind. So, in this case, the uh, the cost difference. Obviously, Battle Fury is better because you can farm faster with it. But in a fight where you're just defending and you're spamming sleight of fist, the lightning can also do a pretty decent job. Alliance now moving around as a five man. Very aware the miracle could be out and about on the hunt on that slot. They're gonna smoke up themselves and see if they can catch monkey business off guard. Monkey business will reveal themselves as they clear out this mid lane of creeps and. Let's see who can get the jump airs for. Moving in, wants to find the blink, and he gets onto Miracle before the dark pack comes out. BKB's popped as well. Big Daddy trying to do what he can with the slide of fist. Miracle getting low, but the Shallow Grave's there. Poison over from the side of the fight. The Chain Frost bounces are lovely. And the Reaper Scythe onto Miracle, bringing him low. Doesn't quite bring him down. Miracle will still live for this. They'll lose Big Daddy, but he's got the Aegis. He's going to be there for round two. And Alliance are getting pretty low here. Avril Bulldog will drop. They'll get the kill on Bristle back. And Ake's in a lot of trouble as well. He has got the Glimmer Cape, but it's going to run out. He's going to go down. And Big Daddy will get loaded here as well. Three heroes dropping on the side of Alliance. They just can't kill anyone on the side of monkey business. And suddenly you've got to ask yourself, Andy, how much trouble are Alliance in? Well, they do have buyback on two of their heroes. Loda, however, does not have buyback. And I honestly think that the Dazzle and the the Venomants are actually the ones causing the most problems they did for them a right lot now. Then, yeah. Because they Absolutely put a grave massive. out onto, uh, onto Miracle, and it's like, okay, well, I obviously can't use Reaper Scythe on him. He tried to put it on him in a way that he would be stunned and maybe get low enough to die, but it didn't end up happening. He still had the Shadow Dance up after the fact. And Crit, his ultimates are just dealing so much damage. You take these long fights against heroes like Slark and Night Stalker, oh, highly man. mobile, and you're taking damage every second you're fighting because of the Poison Nova. It's just too much for them right now. And he's not even a level 60 no. He's got another point to put in it when he gets himself past the level 15, so it's going to be even more volatile. You're absolutely right. Crit's been doing a huge amount here with the Ags Veil. God, when he hit 16, like you said, yes. Jesus, Ooh. the damage. I mean, uh, look at the turnaround now. It's been a 10k swing. The XP slowly uh, gone, well, totally gone back to zero. There's now BKB on mine. So more BKBs coming out for the side of Alliance. Uh, did Big Daddy spend his gold? We saw him on 2k gold earlier on top of the Scardi. He bought bots. Oh, just the bots. Okay, yeah. but now he's managed to amount 2.2k. Up again, S4, looking away, Remnant forward, Big Daddy wants to fight, Slide of Fist, Searing Chains catching on to Bulldog and My Nuts, now the rest of the gang turns up, they're going to run straight in for the Bristleback, Bristleback gets forced away, but he doesn't get himself down the cliff, Poison Nova's going to be up in two seconds here, the Chain Frost bouncing between them, Snowball in back onto Miracle, but the Slide of Fist burying them down, Bulldog's going to drop, My Nuts to fall as well as Miracle picks himself up a dominating streak, S4, he's trying to firefly himself away across the tree line, Miracle with the chase down onto Loda, Loda in a lot of trouble, he's got a Reaper's side, but he's got no one to use it he tries to get it out, but Big Daddy with a slide of fist dodge will get themselves to kill. Three heroes down once again on the side of Alliance. This time it's only Bulldog with the buyback available. Oh man, they, they need to do something about these fights. They just, they need to be able to smoke, maybe find a pick or two, and then just go try to mega. Like, 
Look at the damage. I mean, look, we can see from the damage. 3k damage yeah, straight is Poison Nova. He hit everyone that fight with yep. Poison Nova. All five heroes got hit. Every oh, single one. Man. I think, you know what his next time's got to be? It's got to be an Octarine, surely. Octarine that is very good. That would be beautiful. Yeah, I mean, you could also just go for, uh, like, a Shiva's a Refresher or something, too. Although Refresher yeah, doesn't have the mana that's for that's true. Shiva's would also be very nice in these situations, because we're seeing a lot of fights where Alliance is just getting caught in choke points. And, yeah. And just really, really struggling because of it. Yeah, the thing about Octarine is Poison Nova is a, a 60 second cooldown, which is already like way more often than you're going to be fighting realistically anyway. Like you're not going to be taking a team fight every single minute. So having Octarine I feel is a bit redundant, but having a Shiva's gives you a little bit more damage AoE style in the fight. And there's still like something to be said for the AoE slow on top of that, because you already got Gale, you got your Poison Sting, you get Shiva's, and you can just be a gigantic nuisance. I mean, even buying like anything at this point it doesn't even matter what he buys to be honest because as long as he gets his ult off he's golden i think it's worth kind of uh mentioning as well that at this point of the game you know monkey business they have been uh, they've lost two sets of racks for quite some time but the way the game's going it just does not feel like that they're having to deal with it it seems to be no issue at all for their lineup and they keep consistently keeping the waves pushed out across the river and maintaining pretty good lane equilibrium the big key points that we talked about early were how Alliance have to continually play from ahead. And this is the reason. Monkey Business team is just flat out stronger in 5 versus 5. If S4 does not get a lasso, and it's like a good lasso into a Reaper, for example, and you turn the fight into a 4v5, like that's how Alliance want to play this. But Monkey Business are not giving them the opportunity. They're smoked again. They want to go. They're ready for the fight. Alliance are kind of split up here. Bulldog at the moment by the Ancients. And he's all alone, all on his own. No tail moving in. They'll look to find the Bristleback first to start this off. And they will get him. Bristleback going to go down. Moon getting low, but the Shallow Grave's there. The Chain Frost is bouncing rather nicely. Crit gets off the Poison Nova, but he's getting Reaper side up. And it will be successful. That's going to be the Venom Monster down. And out of the fight for 90 seconds. Dad. Big Daddy No Tail and Miracle trying to chase it. Gets the Zoom chase onto Loader. They jump forward from Miracle, but miss. But it allows him to get in close. Proximity to S4. They'll take down S4. They'll take down Loader as well. Double kill for No Tail. And again, the cores all hitting the deck on the side of Alliance. They do have buybacks available. But now Miracle applying some pressure along the mid lane. Buybacks may just be forced out here by the side of Alliance. That's going to be kind of tough. That one was actually a little bit closer than the last engagement. So there is only a one kill difference favoring Monkey Business. And like you mentioned, there are buybacks. But for now. I think that Monkey Business has a little bit of a hard time going high ground. Oh, okay, never mind. I didn't realize Miracle had Moonshard too. All right. Okay, so he's he's actually Woo. just dealing a ton of damage now. And there's a Lincoln Sphere now on Big Daddy as well, so he's going to be just that little bit harder to kill. Yep. The Reaper size is going to be very hard to land on this Ember Spirit, and at this point of the game, that is the key bit for Alliance. All right, they're actually. To come back in. Are they just sacking this mid racks? In a lot of cases, when you're ahead, okay, never mind. They're, they're not going to sack it. Snowball's trading onto Moon. Lotus Orb has come out. And it returns Snowball. Bit of ball on ball action there with My Nuts. My Nuts trying to get the punch out. Does get it. Holds in place Moon. And now with the Chain Frost bouncing around. Moon will go down. They get the kill onto Night Stalker. Miracle needs to get himself out of there. S4 blinking forward. Can't quite get the lasso off in time as Miracle gets himself away with the Shadow Dance. We'll right, now so. see if they can get a push on themselves. There is no buyback here on Moon. So Alliance will probably try and do their best to abuse this and maybe try to get those Mega Creeps that they've been looking for for the last 20 minutes of the game. Yeah, you, you can't get overconfident right now if you're Monkey Business because your base is pretty much in shambles still. You got no Tier 4s. Oh, this is this is a lovely timing for Roshan as well if they can get the people in. 30 seconds and it's back up. That's for me. It's a I don't They're going to wait for it. I mean, I guess Night's Dogs are going to be so hard for, for the side of Alliance to sneak a Rosh attempt against Monkey Business at this point. They probably have an idea that Roshan is going to be on the table for Alliance, but without the use of the Night Stalker, it's a lot more difficult to take that fight around the Roshan pit, because you want his ultimate for sure to restrict a vision from the bat, and you want to make sure that you're going to be able to see what's going on with that Aghanims. So 20 more seconds until Moon's alive. Seems like for now Alliance want to try to maybe look for a pick, maybe assuming that Monkey Business would try to push out the lanes in order to have better control, so that way they can go for Roshan, but... Here comes the spawn. This gonna is go going to be... This is Roshan number four, right? Uh, it's going to be pretty damn quick. Yeah, they've got the Aegis and Cheese it. And they will be able to get it. Monkey Business aren't going to be able to do anything about this one. Moon's now back up. They are smoked as well. It looks like they were waiting and expecting Alliance to try and go for some action in the base. It's not going to be the case. As they do get the Aegis here. Aegis onto Bristleback. Bulldog will hold onto that. And Loader will take the Cheese for himself. And this is the scariest position that Monkey Business have been in in the last, like, 10-15 minutes, probably. All, all their lanes were pushed in. 
they just lost Roshan. And Alliance looked like they were going to push, but are actually falling back, so... If Monkey Business see that, then they will be pretty happy and just say, okay, well, we're just going to go push at the lanes a tiny bit and play a little bit safe. Because really all they have to do is just force Alliance back once, like make them either run away, like TP back to base or win a team fight. And then they're right back to where they were a couple of minutes ago where it's just, all right, we can just run across the map and take team fights knowing that we always have ways to get back because we have Ember Spirit, highly mobile. We got bots. We can definitely defend the, the two lanes that have actually already been taken and out. And talking about being innovative, it's going to be the Basher here on Big Daddy No Tell. I mean, he's got party. a crap load of attack speed. Why not? I right. mean, it's it's working out. There was kind of the period earlier on where it felt like he just wasn't doing enough. He didn't have the damage, but now he this doesn't is pretty need to, damn scary. He doesn't need to do damage, though. No. That's the thing. Like, they're actually relying on their Venomancer mostly during the mid game to deal damage. And now, of course, Miracle and Big Daddy are both kind of online in terms of items. So it's not just all on him anymore, but crit is definitely like, well, I guess it's not appropriate to say unsung hero, because I've been saying he's been doing a lot the whole game, but he is definitely the, the guy for me this game. Oh boy, S4. Looking to catch someone here, fire flying forward here with a smoke. Would love to take Moon out for a bit of a trip, tries to get him over and will. Gets him over the cliff and Moon now, That's no escape. Good. Reaper Scythe down on him, 110 seconds now for this game to be 5 versus 4. Now with the Hex onto Miracle, moving in, the Bash as well. Now there's the Poison Nova, Grit does get it out, but he's getting fairly low himself. Minus moving in, trying to find the kill onto the Venom Mountain. The Shallow Grave from Flight just in time. Big Daddy trying to do what he can with a Slide of Fist, and they're getting low. The Poison Nova ticking down, will pop Bulldog. He's got the Aegis ready for round 2. Minus will be able to finally find the kill potential. Grit does get it there with the Ice Shards. And Minus gets the Cheesy, and now he's got the Miracle. Can he get it? No, oh, the punch is not enough. Miracle now unstoppable as he takes down Minus on the Tusk. There's been a buyback from Crit here on the Venomancer. And Alliance fairly low at this point. Need to be careful. Big Daddy, can he catch anyone out here? Does get the Searing Chains onto Bulldog. Miracle gets sized up, but he has got that Dark Pack down time. Looks to eat onto Loader. Will he get them? Yes, he gets the Loader kill. There's the buyback from Minus. He's trying to help. He's helping. He gets the kill onto Slug. A massive buyback there to kill Slug, but he has got buyback here on Miracle. Big Daddy getting caught out by Minus. He will be able to run them back. Now S4. LinkedIn looking for Crit. Ake getting fairly low here. The poison damage doing a bit for Crit. Ake, will he stay alive? Yes, yes. Crit will go down. Big Daddy gets himself a triple kill as he does get Minus there, so that's a die bucket on the Tusk. But I kind of feel it was worth it, because that buy bucket from Minus did secure them the kill on Miracle. I mean, they, yeah, they got the kill on Miracle, but they have to force them to buy back too, right? Like, I think in order for that push to be worth it for Alliance, they have to force the cores to buy back. They get a kill on Moon at the very beginning. Keep in mind, this is fighting 4v5 from the start with Aegis and Cheese. That's true. And they still could not deal any base damage. To me, if I'm an Alliance fan, I'm looking at that going, that's no bad news. Like, I, I go there with potentially, what, six or seven heroes if you want to count Cheese, and I can't take a range rack? Fighting with one hero from their team who cannot buy back and is dead at the start of the fight? That That's not good. Well, okay. Maybe the saving grace for Alliance. He's got a lot of money. Oh, and thank God some somebody has a pipe now. Is, I was going to say, Dude. I was waiting for a pipe. I, I honestly can't believe it yeah. took him this long to buy one. Like, I know pipe is one of like the least purchased items oh, in competitive that. play. But this is... Look at that. That's... This is unreal. Well, that's that's not great. It's, uh... Whew. Well. Alliance still hanging in strong. 5.2k gold on S4 as well. But is it strong enough? Monkey business. I'm going to be very happy with the way that this game's turned around. I'm going to be over the moon. We know that they are, are very loud in their voice comms. And I can imagine this game. If you're oh, the amount the of yelling, team, dude. Oh, my goodness. I, I'm pretty sure Off even the they themselves, like, rip headphone users. Like, they're all deaf after this game, most likely. Big Daddy now, 4.5k gold. I mean, does he just does he finish off the Abyssal here with a Basher? I guess, or does he sell the drums and look to buy something else before finishing off the Basher into Abyssal? Mm. I think Abyssal's still pretty good, actually. Okay. Oh, S4. Ah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you can use items while you're sliding, right? I'm pretty sure you can. You're the analysis, Andy. I'm, I'm thinking, because I don't really play much Ember, but I'm pretty sure you could at one point, but... Obviously, you can do some cute stuff if that's the case, but... Yeah. I think for now... Uh, Abyssal's good. Even, like, going back for a pure damage item like Daedalus would be great. 
because he's already got a decent amount of base damage. He attacks super fast because he has Mjolnir. So having a Daedalus just increases his physical damage output so, so much. And they have a Dazzle on their team. And we also have to consider that they're fighting into things like Ice Armor too, so... Smoke here from Alliance. This could be the go. pick that they're looking for. Monkey business already and waiting. Crip. They gotta find Miracle or the Ember. Like, th those are they've the two to, kills. Yes, they've gotta lock him down, shut him down first. As for this being revealed, oh, no. they know he's jumping straight in. Miracle into the front lines of it. Pops the BKB. The poison over is nice. The BKB's out coming out from the side of the lines. The Chain Frost is going to bounce an awful amount of times here. Crit's going to get dropped first. Big Daddy will ram down himself out of the fight here. Moose trapped in the shards. He'll get taken down as well. Two to fall on the side of Monkey Business. They have lost Loader on the side of Alliance. Trying to work onto Miracle, but he's just too damn tanky. And Alliance are just slowly losing health points. Big Daddy's still alive here. Being healed up by Fly. Trying to walk away. Miracle's going to be the one with the cleanup here. It's three to drop. Bull Bulldog will get himself forced back. S4 and Bulldog still living for the time being, but Miracle is looking to chase now. He's going to hold back. Is he going to be able to find anything more? Looks like S4 and Bulldog will be lucky enough to get themselves away with their lives intact. So he's a three for three trade there. And a slight, well, XP wise, favoring the side of Alliance House, they fell behind a bit, but gold only just for Alliance as well. So I don't know. I mean, does that fight mean anything, or is this just kind of resetting the uh, position for both teams? I, I think that's more like just a reset. Yeah. I mean, yeah, losing uh, the Necro kind of hurts, but Monkey Business lost their Night Stalker and their Ember Spirit, so at the end, I think it was uh, more or less even. The, the biggest problem that Monkey Business have right now is that they've been double racks for a very long time, so the lanes just continually push in. Normally, when stuff like that happens, maybe Miracle can look to go across the map and try to find a pickoff with the Silver Edge, but he has to go and push out the lanes instead. So he's not able to apply any real pressure in the way of just going over to Alliance and being like, yo, you gotta deal with me. But I, I think if one good fight happens for Monkey Business, and they're able to just take, you know, one or two of the cores out, force buyback, they're gonna be in a really good spot to actually win this game. But just like that, Alliance can take one good fight, be outside a monkey business base, and get Megas. I mean, it's it's very tense right now because at this stage, it's 62 minutes in, which means that the base dies really freaking fast if you actually lose a team fight badly. Like, you get, like, 4-1 or something like that. So if anything crazy happens, either team can still take this. Oh, smoke's ready to go here for the side of Alliance. Are they going to go with it? Load up. To try and lead the way. Roshan back up as we can see, just over a minute. We might see Alliance maybe hold off until that happy time. They might even smoke to check out for the Rosh. Do they have another smoke? They yeah, the Courier's yeah, following. Load yeah, of purchase yeah. one for the team. For the I know both teams are running kind of low, because when you get to this point, you're pretty much buying them off cooldown. Alliance. In the fog of the moment. Aghanim's Dazzle. Okay, Not Aghanim's something we see dazzle. games to get to the point of a lot of the time. And it will be Abyssal. He does decide to invest in that one and pick it up here on Big Daddy's Ember Spirit. Yeah, I like the Abyssal choice. I think it's really solid. And because of the fact that his reactions have been on point this game, like he's always very quick to react to situations. You can get like a quick Abyssal on somebody. Like we saw S4 get chained. Oh, I was hoping for this, Andy. The Refresher. The four-man lasso. Oh could be coming. God. Oh, yeah. All right, so now all they need to do is buff. Oh, yeah. They need to buff Reaper Scythe so it becomes an AoE with Aghanims. <laughs> then you just get, like, four Reaper eggs. How's Ake doing on top of the pot? Has he got anywhere near the goal for an Aghanims on the Lich? Because I'd love to see a Lich Ags as well. His Lich bounces were actually pretty good in the last yeah, fight. They're but... doing a lot. I mean, th the fact that these fights oh, kind of they... go on and they spotted Alliance. Oh, the Ember stop. Okay, he just came here. Miracle wants to go, and in we go, straight away onto Bulldog. Gale's going to connect onto two, and he's going to look for Loader. There's your Poison over, connects onto Loader and Bulldog. Bulldog puts the, uh, puts the BKB, Loader. Uh. We'll get himself forced off down, but now Big Daddy turning up with a side of fist. Abyssal Blade onto Miners, they'll bring down the Tusk. The bounces are nice, now the refresh, S4, lassoing everybody. Bulldog's trying to work his way for the fight. Big Daddy's have to remnant himself out of this one. Miracle getting low, the Lotus Orb is on him. Then he will be able to get himself out of this alive, but Crit might not be as lucky. Looks like Crit will pay for his sins on the Venomancer. There's going to be a buyback here from Loader. Loader will get himself back in towards the fight blink. Forward from S4. Getting the sticky napalm down here. Void from Moon. Forces himself back down. Miracle still pretty much on full life points. There's your Scythe coming out onto the slot. Bulldog incredibly low. Needs to get himself away from these guys. That's Loader. A oh, that is indeed a dieback. 100 seconds on the clock for Loader. 
Ake waltzing himself around. Couple of slaps from Miracle will do the job, and you've got three heroes down on Alliance. S4 was looking for a bit of a rap potentially in the mid lane, trying to do some damage to the Ancient. But now they've got to defend with no mine outs for 30 seconds and no, no Necrophos for over 80. All right, so a couple of things. At the start of that fight, I don't know if Minot's lagged out or what, but he just literally stopped. Did he get abyssaled? No, 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 that was before. Oh, before this. Yeah, I'm okay. saying before he got abyssaled. He, like, he was just standing there, like did not use an ability and then got abyssaled. I don't know what that was, but that was actually really bad for Alliance because normally he gets a sigil out, you know, he, he disables one of the cores for a few seconds and that buys time for Alliance to get some damage out, but Lodo was just under fire that entire time. Miracle mm. was just going ham on him. This is going to be a tough window for Alliance. 50 seconds still. Miracle. Oh, look, at he just runs straight up to the base. Starts to go to work on Bulldog. Link forward from S4. We'll get oh, the last no, again. He lassos himself. Miracle getting bashed up. Can they kill this Slark? He's getting Lebanon out past the BKB. He just turns and fights. He starts to hit onto Bulldog. BKB's been popped by Bulldog as well as S4. Going in with the Firefly. There's your Shallow Grave. And now the bounce is coming out with the Chain Frost. Miracle will pop the Shadow Dance and start to retreat. Big Daddy moving in on the front lines here with a slider fist. Abyssal onto Minus and again. Tusk will be taken down and taken out. 80 seconds here on the clock for Minus. They pull a little bit of time now. 15 seconds and Loader will be back up, but they'll almost certainly lose what surprisingly is only the first set of racks here for Alliance. 60 minutes, six minutes in that they're going to be missing from their own base. But can they fight monkey business out of their base? That's the problem. Like, can they actually force them out? Oh man, this could be a second set going as well. The tier three to drop or to fall pretty quickly. They have got the fortification. We'll buy them sometime. Big Daddy. Straight in with the chains onto Bulldog. And Miracle returns with a push. Get the packs off the side. Loader, of course, is back. Those slider fist bashes. Heading up onto the Necro. Miracle just staying resilient and hitting away at these racks. Not a lot scares him at this point, and he may just go back in. Bulldog's been caught out. Look at the damage. Holy schmoly. Bulldog to fall. S4 forcing himself back out of this one. And Monkey Business will turn their attention back towards the racks here. Flame Break from S4. They're gonna find the melee racks here on the bottom lane. Big Daddy's actually teeping out, but he's got the remnants, so he's gonna be ready to come back and rejoin the fight. And do Alliance really want to try and fight this one out of the base? The pings are coming out. Saying, Loader, get yourself back some. Miracle. He's ready to go in for round them. How many stacks of Essence Shift have we got in the Slark at the moment? 18. 18, okay. That's not crazy, it's not but so it's, crazy. it's decent. It's, it's a decent bit of Agi. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta say though, like this, this comeback from Monkey Business so far has been nothing short of impressive, and all on the back, or I guess lack of back, of the Venomancer, in my opinion. Moon. I did catch him here. Bulldog's gonna walk in. I don't think they want to start the fire here, as there is, there is an angry crit on the high ground. Miracle and Big Daddy No Tail are gonna look to, to join he? forces against Roche. 7.6k gold on the Ember Spray at the moment. Incredibly rich. Look at his net worth. 33,000 here on the man. Big Daddy no -tail showing us that he can he can really put out a performance here on the carry position for Monkey Business. I just love the way that he played this game because yeah. he was relying on the damage from the Venomancer for mid-game, so all he has to do is just dance around the fight. He just continually throws out slates, and we're going for the Perma Knight. I was going to say Eternal Knight. Almost for the side of uh, Monkey Business with that pickup. And uh, has, uh, has Big Daddy spent his money yet? He was closing in on the 8k. What's he got he on spent, the Ember? He bought something. What did he buy? Illusion. Oh, did huh. he, is he in the Moonshot? He's in the Moonshot. He's ah, in the yeah, moon yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. So now he's going to attack crazy fast. And the rest of his team is just going to... Assume the control of Alliance's jungle while he split pushes top. The nice thing about Ember in these really late game situations, and the, the uh, I think the really important thing is no other hero could have done what he did this game. Because he has to be in two places at once. And Ember is one of the heroes who can actually get away with just having bots and having a remnant out across the map and always being able to transition back and forth. Otherwise, you need something like a Wisp or a Coddle to be able to get the same effect, right? So it's crazy important when you're double racks to have a hero with that kind of mobility. And, Fortunately for Monkey Business, they had that in Big Daddy. See when Monkey Business do decide to go again. Alliance holding on to their, their half a set of racks on the bottom lane. And Monkey Business just spread out. Big Daddy trying to get the push back in on this top one. 
Yeah, I, I think it's actually going to be crazy hard for Alliance to win a team fight right now. The thing, though, is you can't ever count out a team with Reapers, uh, Reaper Aghanims, because it only takes one, right? <laughs> like, you get one of the cores at a good time, and you can just walk down, and then all of a sudden, you have to hope that everyone else on the side of Monkey Business has buyback, which should definitely check right now. So S4 has buyback, but uh, everyone else is yeah, the buyback's pretty much pulling ahead. nada. Even for the three, they're going to have it. Off cooldown in a few minutes, they just don't have the dollar. I, I mean, just look at the look, look at the CS this, difference. Have you seen this pickup from Snark? He hasn't got the buyback gold, but he's got a refresher orb. I mean, if you just keep the courier over near where you're fighting, and, yeah. you know, you pop one shadow dance, you kill a hero, you refresh, you got another shadow dance, you it, kill another hero. He's gonna be ready to go. He's actually gonna hold it. He's gonna eat the moon shards yeah. and just pick up the refresher here. Yeah. Refresher, I think, is super underbought for like a six or seven slot. Because having a 10 second BKB at this stage in the game is crazy strong. And I feel like Slark Shadow Dance is one of the strongest carry abilities that you can have in a late game situation. Because you are actually untargetable by this particular team. Because none of their abilities, like you don't have Fissure, you don't have AA Ice Blast, there's no like ground AoE. So the Shadow Dance is fully effective. There's nothing to deal with it. Alliance, are they going to be ready for this defense? Big Daddy. Change on to S4, crit going in with the Gale. Making sure that S4 will have a hard time trying to get the blink in. The veil has been dropped. Again, the chains catching on to Minus and S4. Miracle ready to move in. Did they not have the wrap centuries? around here. Okay, Caught out here by the bash. Miracle now popping the BKB, looking towards S4, looking for the Batrider. A couple more slaps and they'll get it. That's gonna be the Batrider down, does have buyback. As S4 will use that straight away. Bulldog getting the Napar, uh, sorry, the, the goo out into Miracle. And they will be forced to back off here. But I'm sure as the next creep wave comes in, they'll be ready to go for round two here, monkey business. That was no commitment at all. Not at all. They lost nothing. I mean, they, they used a BKB charge, I think, on one hero. But that's about it. And it's a five-second BKB, so it's going to be up real soon. They've still got the poison over as well. Yeah, and, and Big Daddy's just doing what he does best. He's just split pushing. He's making sure all the lanes will be pushing in simultaneously. And only one hero has to do this. This is a very, very good game to be Ember because he can just walk wherever he wants, keep the spirit there, go back when he needs to team fight, and there's not really much of an opening for Alliance to do anything. It's uh, gonna be a 72 minute Shadow Blade here for S4. Let's see if he can catch anyone out with it. But Bauer Bulldog's getting caught out himself. S4 here, getting the lesso, he, but he can't rip them out of this he, one. And now oh he's dear. going back in. The Crimson Guard's been popped, but Miracle starting to build up those Essence Shift stacks. Minus with the Warrior's Punch onto Fly is not enough. There's the second Lesso here onto Big Daddy No-Tail. The Shallow Grave is out, and Minus is as well. He gets taken down. They've lost Bulldog here for nigh on two minutes. And the Courier has been fed down the middle lane. Alliance. I think this is it. I think it's over. Mega Creeps are out. And look at that graph. 20,000 lead. For the side of Alliance turned into a 25,000 lead for the side of Monkey Business. And to just rub salt into the wounds here, it's going to be a satanic pickup by Big Daddy, who's, I think he's just laughing at this point. He's having a great time, Big Daddy. He's like the tankiest Ember I think I've ever seen. I mean, normally you don't see Embers make these items, but I know for a fact that even in like his personal stream and stuff, he, he likes the Mjolnir build. He's done this in the past and he swears by it, so maybe we'll see a bit of a change up in the pub scene for a while in terms of items bought, but... I mean, what else can you say? Monkey business, man. What a disgustingly good comeback from them. Awesome performance out of pretty much everyone on the team. Alliance do tap G -G. out. They call the GG. GG. 73 minutes and 43 seconds. Oi, oi, oi. What a game. Woo! Monkey business. Turning it around. Beautiful. I mean, Alliance, they were in such a strong position early on. And, uh, and I got, we've got to ask the statsmen to post stuff about that because that was a huge swing. Yeah, it was massive. I wouldn't be surprised. That's going to be a 50k swing or something. It was one of the biggest swings yeah. in this patch easily. Not oh, even yeah. just for Dream League, but like all games. But a couple of key points, like we talked about early, uh, the Venomancer, and him buying enough time for Miracle and Big Daddy to actually get to a point where they were relevant. Because yeah. if we look back, it seems like a long time ago because it was a 73 freaking minute game. But during the laning phase, Alliance were crushing it. Like they dual racks, the tier fours were dead inside of Monkey Business base. And they get Aegis, and they get Cheese, and they picked off Moon before the fight even started. 
and they still couldn't end the game. Well, that was when you knew something was up. And then I was like, all right, well, if you can't end the game now, how are you actually going to end the game? And it turns out uh, they had no way of ending the game. Absolutely. And I just want to know as well, one of my favorite things to always look at is... is